Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Senior Report is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. From the Access Channel 5 television studio in Mayville, it's Senior Report with Reed Powers. Senior Report is broadcast live throughout northern Chautauqua County on Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. each week. Call in and share a thought, make a comment, ask a question, or simply wish someone a happy birthday on Chautauqua County's only live call-in senior program. Since 1995, Reed has been bringing viewers hundreds of interesting guests informing the community on a variety of subjects. Here's the host of the show, Reed Powers. Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm not Reed Powers. I'm Doc Hamels, as you know, and I usually sit on the other side of this, uh, this room and I come on and do my little piece. Reed's under the weather today. Reed, if you're watching, we hope you feel better. Get back here. We need you. Okay. Uh, Truly a wonderful weekend uh, ahead of us. The weather looks very promising for like the 60s today and 70s for Easter Sunday. Gosh, it's going to be a great weekend. The flowers are popping up. I can't believe it. I don't know about your place, but the, I, the birds are like going crazy and they're nesting and flitting around and attacking the bird feeder. I saw a turkey yesterday and deer and just all kinds of wildlife. It's like they, the, the, they flipped the switch and everything came alive. This morning, uh, we're going to start out with a special, special guest. We have a regular special guest, but we have a double special guest. Um, he's going to be talking to you about an important topic that is near and dear to my heart. As many of you may or may not know, I'm a fire commissioner in Ripley. Uh, and uh, it is so important to maintain uh, the integrity of our fire departments and, and make sure we uh, have folks that are more than willing to go out there in the middle of the night and do the job and protect us while we're sleeping. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you uh, Mr. Lyle Holland, who has a very important message for all of us to listen to. Lyle, welcome. Thank you. Um, first, uh, I'd just like to talk about um, our recruitment program. Uh, as he's got uh, a program that they're running that for the host state to recruit New, New York. Um, in Chautauqua County, almost all of our fire departments are um, uh, participating in this, and it's on April 26th and 27th. Most of the departments are doing it on the 26th in Chautauqua County. Some are doing it both days. In Westfield, we're doing it on the 26th from 10 to 2. Um, and some of the programs I'm on, on the FASNI Recruitment and Retention Committee, FASNI is the Firemen's Association State of New York. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on their committee, and uh, we're trying to build up membership in the fire service. Right now, we're down about almost a third from what we were 10 years ago in the yeah. fire service as a lot far of organizations as seem to be having that problem. and uh, we really need more manpower i mean we need young people we need older people i mean here a few years ago reed powers was on the fire department um the rumor had it he, yeah, he's mentioned it but we didn't yeah. always believe him yeah, i mean <laughs> reed, reed came in at an older age he uh he became an emt he ran our ambulance for a long time until mm -hmm. he finally retired we just had uh, Juddy Storms. He was a retired uh, fireman from uh, Mass or Michigan, mm -hmm. and um, he came back here, and he's an EMT now, and he answers most of our night calls. I mean, he's so. A, so you're looking for anybody that's and, willing and, to? Uh, and, what are the requirements? Uh, to to uh, be a firefighter, you at least got to have a minimum of um, scene support. If you're a scene support person, you you um, you do everything but interior firefighting. Okay. You pull hoses outside. You might work on EMS. Um, if you're an interior fighter fighter, then you go inside the building. Okay. So we have two different options for. I mean, when I started, I was interior. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm older, I know <laughs> that I'm, I'm not physically capable of doing interior sure. firefighters. You know get to limits. a point, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta know your limits so you don't get hurt. So what's the minimum age to be a firefighter? Minimum age uh, is 18 years old. Okay. I don't. 
Westfield just got went to 18 here about 10 years ago. I think we were the last ones to go to 18 years old. Okay. Men um, and women alike. Men, men and women, we have both in the fire service. Um, there is no upper age limit. Okay. Um, as long as you can pass your physical and that, uh, mm -hmm. there's two different physicals, one for interior and one regular. How much does it cost to be a fireman? <laughs> Lots of time. <laughs> so no money? No money. Just, uh, okay. Uh, okay. You know, you just come to your local fire department. Um, you can come anytime. Uh, in Westfield, there's always somebody there on Monday nights. That's when all our meetings and drills and that are. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can be as active as you want. I mean, you know, we have a limit to how many calls you got to make in Westfield. But if you're not in interested in EMS, that's your option. You don't mm -hmm. have to be involved in EMS. Uh, we need 90% of our calls are EMS, and we really appreciate the help in that area. But um, so that's where we are there. On April 26th from 10 to 2 at the fire uh, hall, what, what will people see or do there? They, um, they're going to have some demonstrations there, uh, hose lays and stuff like that. Um, I think they're trying to get a vehicle to for auto extrication. Um, I'm not 100% sure the gentleman was supposed to be with me. I was hoping he's going to be here, but uh, uh, he's the one that's really in charge of it. You're running solo here. I'm running solo here, so I mean, I came up with this this morning. Okay. So <laughs> here we are. Okay, anything else you want to tell the folks? Um, on this recruitment retention, uh, if you're a young kid, person just out of uh, school, um, there's a lot of the um, programs where you can go to college, uh, community college for free. Wow. I mean, free tuition mm -hmm. for community colleges. Um, you sign up and you uh, you sign a contract with your fire department, local fire department, and you had to, when you're available, you had to attend so many calls and that, and you had to volunteer for so long afterwards. Okay. If, uh, my understanding is if you break that contract, then you're responsible for whatever sure. percentage that you didn't complete your contract with. But that's uh, my understanding. I we got to get going here in a little bit, but um, I do have a question. Is uh, What about younger kids, like 15, 16? Is, what can they do? Anything? Um, quite a few of the departments in the county have a Explorer program or junior firefighters. The Explorer program is through the Boy Scouts of America. Junior firefighters are kind of independent. In Westfield, um, starting this Tuesday, we're going to have a recruitment at the Westfield School from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday okay. every morning. Um, you got to be at least 14 years to join the, the uh, Explorers. To join junior firefighters, you got to be at least 16. Okay. Um, but what we'll do there is we'll get you um, into the fire service, show you how things work. Um, also, a lot of these schools now have, you have to have so much community service. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's a perfect match, isn't it? So, I mean, here you got a chance to get your community service in mm -hmm. and have a good time. And okay. we have boys and girls both in either one of these programs. So uh, we're hoping to get that started. So. Okay, so let's give them one more blast. What, what's the most important thing you want folks to uh, know before you, we, get, we move on here? I guess the most important thing is we just need to help. I mean, okay. I mean, it gets to the point now where we're pulling out two or three departments right. to get enough manpower mm -hmm. to, to fight calls. I mean, we had a fire in Westfield last week. We had seven yeah. departments there. I mean, right. but... Um, you know, just the manpower is a real issue, and mm -hmm. you know, th if if we can't do it as volunteers, they're going to have to go to paid, and there goes your tax base. I mean, you just sure. any small community just cannot afford to pay people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So. Okay, well, thanks, Lyle, for coming in and sharing the information with us, folks. If you know anyone that's interested in uh, joining the firemen, uh, becoming a firefighter, uh, EMT, paramedic. Uh, any, any, the fire police, we didn't even talk about those folks. Um, lots of opportunities to serve your community. And this is throughout the county, April 26th and 27th. Check out your local fire departments. Just go in and see where your tax dollars are going. I mean, you, we support the, all those programs with tax dollars. So again, thank you for coming in. If you have any questions, call your local fire departments, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, well, let's move right along here. This is an exciting morning. I, I, I didn't know I was going to be hosting. I didn't know Lyle was coming. I didn't even know our guest <laughs> until just a little while ago. So a few things to share with you right along that we've been talking about. Today, April 19th, we have uh, over at the, in Asheville, New York, at the Children's Safety Education Village, there's an Easter carnival. We'll bring that poster up here. There we go. Uh, it's going to be running from 10 to 1. It's only a couple dollars, and they're going to have, as you can see, all kinds of different things there, games, and kids get candy, and there's going to be contests. There's going to be uh, like a... Um, Easter basket raffle, you, you, you buy tickets and you, you can win a, uh, a really pr big uh, Easter basket full of prizes and things. And I think there's quite a few of them. Our, our Rotary Club, 
donated six baskets ourselves for that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Beautiful day. If you haven't been out uh, to the Safety Village, it's a great location. If you're a grandparent, bring the kids along. Okay, thank you. Also coming up, um, oh, well, let's go back to the, the carnival today. A very important uh, group will be there uh, as they have in the past. The, the Masons, uh, the Chautauqua County Masons organizations, the different lodges, they have something called the uh, Masonic um, Child ID Program. And uh, they're going to be at the Safety Village this morning. They're setting up right now because I'll be joining them right after the show. Um, what they do is they take pictures of your children grandchildren. They write down information uh, through the computer, put it, all this information on a disc, and then you take it home. If your child ever gets lost or maybe wanders off, maybe on a field trip wanders the other part of the zoo and you can't find your, the child, or at the, we always say the Chautauqua County Fair, you pull out this little disc, you put it into a little uh, computer, pictures of the children, their, their fingerprints, uh, information, nickname, birthmarks, whatever. Uh, it's all right there. And last year we did uh, 92 children. So it's a very popular program and the, the Masons go all over the county with this great program. So if you're going to be over there today, stop in and say hi and uh, we'll be uh, working with all the kids. Okay, also coming up May 10th, the Westfield Mabel Rotary Auction. It's been going on for years will be held at Easton Hall around uh, 5.30. Uh, this program has all kinds of, of uh, things f up for auction. Our good buddy Dave Brown will be the auctioneer once again, and he's an entertainment unto himself. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. And it's an unbelievable deal. $10 per person. You get a barbecue dinner all the soft drinks or beer you can drink, and an opportunity to win $500. That's before you even raise your ticket, okay? Uh, your ticket also gives you the opportunity to bid on the silent auction, where Dave will be bringing up various uh, prizes up for sale, and then there's always what they call the, like the, uh, the, the at the tables, the, the silent auction. One's active, one's silent. Active with Dave, silent along the tables, and you sign your number like if you, uh, like this cup, You'd say, okay, number 17, I'll, I'll bid a dollar on it. And then the next person might be number 24, and they would say two dollars and so forth. So it's a progressive silent auction where with Dave, it's more active and you raise your numbers and all that. It's a lot of fun. It's exciting. Um, where's the money go? The money goes back to our community. We support all kinds of programs, the soup kitchens, sending kids to camp, uh, helping out with the school system, scholarships, just sending kids to special leadership programs, and it just goes on and on and on. So the Rotary Club auction, May 10th, we'll be talking about that again. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, a lot of you uh, that are listening uh, this morning, you are senior citizens perhaps, or you're getting close to that age, like myself, um, there's lots of groups out there, folks, to join. I don't have the list that Reed normally has here, but I know they're in Silver Creek, Mayville, Fredonia, uh, Panama, just everywhere, uh, Westfield, Ripley. And uh, the, the thing to, to look for in the newspaper, I think it's on Monday or Tuesdays, they have a special senior section, and it lists just about every one of the organizations in the Post Journal and the Observer, and uh, check it out. Get out. Have some fun. See some old friends. Do activities. They do road trips out to various locations and they play games and uh, just have a great time. So the other thing is this being a live show on Saturday mornings. Uh, right now it's 9.15 and we're live. If you have an announcement for your organization or something that's coming up for, for Easter tomorrow, for, for instance, you can call us at 753-5225 or as Reed would say, 753-JACK. Okay, just spell those letters on your phone and give us your announcements, birthdays, you can wish somebody happy anniversary. This is your program. This is, this is really an opportunity for you to, to share your, your news with, with the rest of the county. This show is rebroadcasted throughout the county throughout the week in Jamestown and Dunkirk, right here in Mayville, uh, throughout the week, and you can check the scheduling in the newspaper for that. So anyways, so... Uh, let us know. Call in. Don't be shy. If you're extremely shy, you can call in, talk to whoever's on the phone. We'll write it down. They'll hand it to me, and then we'll make that announcement just as well. But we'd love to hear your voice and hear from you. Okay. Well, since Reed isn't here, and I 
am doing two jobs. Normally I come over here and I say something witty or something controversial or something or other. Uh, today I thought we'd do some Easter trivia. So get your pens and papers out and I'm going to ask you just 10 quick questions and I'll give the answers as we go along. But the things you didn't know about Easter, maybe. Some of you might be Easter uh, uh, aficionados. So let's see how Randy does over here. He's our cameraman. So I'll see if he, how he does. So we'll, we'll score you. And there'll be a bonus question. So first question. Uh, which country brought us the tradition of Easter eggs? Whoever's on my earpiece, you can join in on this. So who brought, what country first started the tradition of Easter eggs here in our country? Who brought it here? Any guesses? Okay, Germany. Germany was, uh, it was actually the one that the folks brought it with them as their traditions here. Being a musician, I, I had to think about this one. Who sings the original version of Peter Cottontail? It's not Bob Hope. Tick, 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 tick. No, it's Randy, come on, wake up. Do you know? I do not know. Uh, Gene, Gene Autry, you know? He's, he's the guy that does all those uh, great um, holiday songs. Which flower is associated with Easter? This is an easy one. Lily. Lily, yeah. Uh, what are the Easter colors? I'll give you a part of the answer, Randy. I'm wearing one of them. <laughs> Purple and yellow. Those are the official colors. Okay. We're having some fun here. I hear yell uh, answers being yelled out. Now, this one I did not know. Where would you go to see the world's largest chocolate bunny? I'm going to say Hershey. Hershey, Pennsylvania? South Africa. It's a 7,000 pound Duracell rabbit. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Maybe it was some promotion years ago. Okay. Ooh, I didn't write, write the answer down. Okay. Within 10 million, how many <laughs> peeps are eaten every year in the USA? I'll give you within 10 million. <laughs> 20 million. 20 million over here. What do you say, Randy? I'll say 15. 50. 700 million peeps. I don't even like the things, so somebody's eating my share of the things. Ugh, it make me thirsty. But they always go in those Easter baskets. What kind of bread is associated with Easter? I didn't know this one. Right. Right. Good answer. Hot cross buns. Ooh, now, if you want trivia, here's a crazy one. <laughs> I didn't even know there was such a question. How old is the world's oldest hot crust bun. I'll give it to you within 20 years. <laughs> the oldest hot crust. I didn't make this up. You know, sometimes I do. Read sometimes does, but this is this was on the internet. The oldest hot crust. 170. All right, Randy says 170. Jeff on my earpiece is 300. Randy gets to close. It's 189 years old. Don't ask me why anybody would have a hot cross bun. Evidently, it's one of those things that they've had for, you know, ongoing is a, is a custom. And somebody, I, I don't. On Easter, what do you have, to, what do you have to do to have good luck coming to you in the coming year? What do you have to do for good luck? The polls are open. Easter. For Easter. I've never heard of this custom before. What do you... Okay, the answer is wear a new piece of clothing. That's why the ladies always like to get new dresses. I, hats, yeah, hats will work. Okay, and finally, choose uh, what traditionally did children do to prepare for Easter, for the Easter hare, Easter rabbit, but it's Easter hare in Germany. What did they do traditionally? Any idea? They made birds' nests, so they would capture the, uh, the 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 treats when the Easter rabbit comes or the Easter hare. Some of them would actually put the the nests in their hats. So uh, there you have. Well, think about our baskets; they sort of look like a like a bird's nest, don't they? And all right, now this is the tiebreaker for those of you that were fighting about the answers at home. I have no idea how to say this word, but I'll give it my best shot. What is the name, this is for the tiebreaker, for the traditional Ukrainian craft of egg decorating? Come on, Randy, what is it? <laughs> it's called Pisanka. Don't, P-Y-S-A-N-K-A, looks like Pisanka. 
So there you have it. There's your Easter trivia questions for another year. I can't wait for the next holiday. Uh, anyways, a little bit of fun. All right, folks, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to introduce to you our, our guest today and talk about what he's going to talk about. Lots of, lots of interesting things. Remember, you can call in. Here's the PSA. This is for you. Pasanka. That kind of stuff. But I decided to take that. Is there a fire in you? Volunteer at www.fireinyou.org. There I am. Okay, I was wondering where I went. Okay, folks. Um, yes, it was 189 years uh, old on that hot cross bun. I still am stretching my head on that. I wonder if they keep it in a special case or something. Countries just over what 200 years old. What's that? I wonder if it's because the United States is a couple. I have no years. idea. I don't know. I'll have to research this further and get back to you on that one. Who's keeping that in the cupboard? Nancy okay. Timmons is her, her name. Okay. And these breads are baked on Good Friday, evidently. So, some, somebody's tradition. Okay, folks, uh, I want to introduce to you Mr. Mark Lutz. I said it correctly because I have it phonetically written here. And we're going to be talking about something that I don't know if we've ever talked about here on the show before, about uh, moving your stuff from one, one area to another. And uh, the baby boomers that we are, we're, we're bouncing around all over the place, so we're going to hear about him. So, right now, let's uh, say hi to Mark and good morning. Good morning. And uh, Mark... Uh, you, you told me you've never been on the show before, but you've been on the radio. So feel free to relax, and hopefully we'll get some phone calls, 753-5225, to call in and maybe have some questions. Mark, what are we going to talk about today? Well, um, when Reed approached me, he was uh, concerned about uh, the seniors and, uh, you know, they, they, their moving experience mm -hmm. and uh, just the questions that they may have and... Uh, where we can go from go from there okay well before we get to, to, to that part of the topic tell us a little bit about yourself uh, you know have you lived in Chautauqua County or my my entire life um, I live in Fredonia I have uh, seven children um, you've got seven kids well it's the it's the Brady the Bunch the a little bit yes <laughs> but uh, yes very wow, much but uh, so I have always have workers that's <laughs> uh, that's one good thing so uh, um, they, I mean they're all pretty much older now I mean the youngest is 19 but okay. uh, they're they're on their way out and uh, and now I'm going into the uh, the senior bracket too right. so. the, the, we call it the empty Easter basket syndrome. <laughs> that's right <laughs> someday someday I hope <laughs> Um, uh, I graduated from Dunkirk High School, went to Carter Um mm -hmm. very involved in, uh, in my personal life, very involved in sports, uh, have, was the past president of Fredonia Little League for the last, oh. the last 12 years. This okay. is my first year not doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's, it's a little bit of a, of a letdown, especially this time of the year. Um, but there's other bigger and better things on the horizon. Sure. So, well, that's so. good, good. You're involved with your community and seven kids. I've got four. I thought that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's 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 just kind of begin to to talk a little bit about moving. Um, I, I I drive down the road so often and I see pickup trucks with stuff hanging out precariously, looking like it's going to go flying into my windshield, and, and I'm thinking, like, this can't be good. So tell me about your company and, and what services you provide. Let's start there. How's that? Well, I mean, we, um, my company is Dan's Moving and Storage. Um, we are a full-service moving company. Okay. Um, that, that includes everything from coming in, packing up your kitchen belongings, um, moving them, Everywhere in the in the country, we do a lot of things for the U.S. government, uh, troops that are going overseas, oh, things okay. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, we we are the quote official mover of of Fredonia Place. Um, we also do quite a bit of work at, at Tanglewood um, in in Jamestown, Lakewood, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the biggest the biggest key in any move, be it seniors, be it family moving from Chautauqua County to, to Florida is communication. Um, you know, we, we provide free estimates for people um, come out and they're telling us what they're going to move. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, that's the biggest, 
that's the number one step in the in the moving process. I mean, some people, if they're just moving locally um, and they're just moving their washer, dryer, stove, and refrigerator, you know, that's not, you know, that's not. You don't need to come out and do an estimate for that, so to speak. So you'll do small moves. Oh, most certainly. Most oh, certainly. all right. Because yes. you know, I don't know how many times people say, you know. Uh, you know, we, we're, we've got this refrigerator we want to take to my daughter-in-law, or, or, or people are swapping out and things like that. That's will you do? No, here's a question, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but okay. would you do? Let's say, for instance, I know people where they're remodeling their homes, and they've got all this stuff in the basement. Would you bring it from the basement? Oh, most certainly, most certainly. Okay. I mean, uh, that's you know, people people redo their floors mm -hmm. all the time. Um, we, we put it in storage, we put it in their garage, the floors get redone, and uh, move it back. Okay, if my family is listening right now, uh, the next time you want all that stuff moved around, call, call, uh, call Mark, okay? Not me. <laughs> I don't know how many times we've moved the refrigerators or, or washing machines up and downstairs. It's like, it's, it's an amazing thing that we don't kill ourselves. Right. So, <laughs> tell, so, well, let's talk a little bit about that. What makes a mover a mover? In other words, you have to have training or anything like that. Of course, of course. Um, you know, the the of course the the industry joke is a, a strong back and a weak mind, of course. But uh -huh. uh, but uh, that's not that's not totally true. Um, you know, I mean, in this day and age, just think about what what things cost. The uh, the cost of when you go out and buy a a new sofa or, or a new appliance. Um, you know. When when you have that thing, those things in your hand in your truck, and you're talking sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars oh, of, sure. of possessions in in that truck, and um, you know my my our crew they they go through some special training. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know pianos for example. You mm. know there there has to be <laughs> you know there has to be some special training sure. um, for for things like that, especially going up and down stairs with a piano. So, mm -hmm. so. okay, let's let's hold that thought for a minute. We've got a phone call. Uh, good morning, caller. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. I had a. Oh no. Hi. I have a <laughs> I have a question for the guest. My question is, why are you here? Uh, I am not there because I have some serious problems. Well, I, we we I, know that, and the, the psychologist said. Take the medicine, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to the doctor on uh, Tuesday. Okay. And I just had a real problem, uh, which I'm glad I wasn't on the show. <laughs> but at any rate, um, I have a, a question for Mark. I'm assuming this is real. That's real. <laughs> my my question is, um, he, you were talking about estimates, and uh, I I I googled up the uh, site for. Uh, movers and it's uh, it was full of scams it said they have all kinds of scams based on estimates they they give you a nice low estimate oh. and they load you up take off and then they announce that actually you had twice or three times their estimate and uh, they got to charge a lot more extra for that so you may be paying triple or quadruple what they estimated oh. Um, and I'm sure you don't do this, but that must be a, a real problem in your business. It is. It is. It, it that sort of thing, you know, the the 60 minute shows that they show that kind of thing, um, really happen. Really happens in a uh, in a big city um, like here in Chautauqua County, New York. I mean, we've been in business, and my my grandfather was Dan. Um, we've been in business since like uh, 1931. Um, you know. We're, we're very reputable. Um, you, you have to be careful. You, you do have to be careful. Um, moving, moving locally, it, you know, it's an hourly rate. It's not, you don't necessarily uh, uh, get, it's not thousands of dollars to move locally or something like that. Um, so, and, and again, communication. If, if, if you tell me that you're moving Six room. I come to your house and it's six rooms of furniture, and that's what you move. That's what the price is going to be. Um, you really you need to go with uh, reputable companies. Um, you know you don't want to. There's there's big van lines, North American, United, Mayflower, Allied, things like that. Those are companies that are very much regulated by the ICC. Um, that's the Interstate Commerce Commission. Um, you know, you can go on their websites. There's places you can, you know, better business bureaus. You can check 
you know, about companies, things like that. Mark, Mark your card says North American Van Lines. What, how, how does that tie into Dan's moving in storage? Are you well, we, are, we are an agent for okay. North American Van Lines. Mm -hmm. um, that is when you move to from New York to California. Um, the authority to do that is through North American Van Lines. Okay. Okay. Um, so some rules and regulations correct. probably going across state lines. Correct. Things. Okay. Caller, does that answer your question? Okay. Reed's gone. Okay. Well, that was a great question because, you know, we get uh, comments all the time about scams, whether it's heating or electricity or uh, different kinds of insurances. So just as Mark's saying is, you know, you might pay a little more up to get a reputable dealer, but you're going to get what you pay for, and it's going to be there safe and sound, right? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Um, I'm, I'm interested to, 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 to pursue one area of this. Um, my dad's going to be 91, okay? And I'm not saying he's a particularly fussy guy, but I can imagine if, if I said to him, you know, Dad, we, we're going to move some things here, and um, uh, he might be kind of skittish about having strangers in the house. No, that's that is definitely a concern. So how do you get around that? Because I know many seniors, you know, they're they're not as strong as they used to be. They're not gonna, you know, not gonna tackle some guy. I mean, how do you how do you make them feel comfortable with somebody in their house? Well, again, you know, it's the uh, a little bit of sensitivity training. Okay. Um, you know, uh, every this is a very traumatic period of moving, sure. especially uh, big change. Right. Exactly. Um, so you know, we we have some. You know, training for for that, especially especially in the seniors. Um, you know, if if they have questions, certainly willing to come out. Um, always, I mean, they, there's always concerns. Do you usually have like a family member there during the move, or do you? In a, in, it? A, in a in a senior situation, yes. Probably I mean, keeping there, an you know, eye the, things. Right, exactly. Um, you know, just to make sure a lot of, you know, myself included. I'm sure you too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't want to admit that we can't do everything that we used to be able to do anymore. I never could to begin with, so it's no big deal. <laughs> but, but you know, you get you get a 87 year old man yeah, who yeah. thinks he's gonna <laughs> exactly. So, so that uh, you know, sometimes with the uh, the family member that that right keeps them keeps them in line, keeps them straight, and get them out of the way too. We have another caller. You're popular. Good morning, uh, caller. Welcome to the show. Oh, good morning. Good morning. We're here. Oh, good morning, Mark, and good morning, John. Good right? Morning. Yes. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I have a. It's a beautiful day, and I have a comment, and then a couple of questions. Can okay. I do it all at once? Absolutely. This is your show. Take away. Oh, very good. I'm just gonna sit back and let you take over the show. <laughs> oh, very well. Um, well, first of all, good morning, Mark. Um, moving is on my personal list of stressful experiences and you're talking about seniors here, and I definitely want to recommend Dan's Professional Movers from personal experience. Is your wife? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you're very welcome. They, you do lower that stress factor mm -hmm. for anyone, especially seniors who are contemplating a move. Now, I have a couple of questions. You mentioned a piano. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. First of all, your grandfather, Dan, moved an upright piano for our family. Now, that was way over a half a century ago. Yeah. And I was, I was young, of course. Back then, this move seemed overwhelming to me. And, Mark, I, today I still wonder, how do you, how do you, do you safely manage <laughs> a huge item such as that baby grand piano oh, yeah. <laughs> that's going up to the second story flight of stairs? I've never witnessed that, and I wondered if you could give a visual image of it. <laughs> Did you bring Let's, the video? Yeah, where's, where's the piano we can, we can use? I can't wait for this one. <laughs> um, well, we, we do a lot of moving. Don't at, try this at home. Yes, very much, very much. We do a lot of moving at, uh, at Fredonia State um, for, the, for their pianos where they're, you know, they have, it's a music school. They do many, many, many pianos. Um, that's right. So... You know, there is there a baby grand piano. Um, it actually the legs come off and it tips up on its side. It doesn't it doesn't normally fit out the door just in the uh, position that it's in. Um, and 
they go on special equipment, which is called a piano board, which basically will slide up the stairs or down the stairs. Um, we also have what's called a four-wheel dolly that, uh, that it sits on and will roll. Um, the literally going up the stairs or coming down the stairs is still just the old, they haven't invented anything to, uh, <laughs> to move it to the second floor, except your, your back. <laughs> so... Young bucks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. I I just couldn't uh, couldn't visualize that. Thank you. Now um, I have the second part of my question that I was thinking about while I was listening to all of your uh, moving stuff is what what was the most unusual cargo you were ever asked to ever asked to move? I'm getting feedback. I'm sorry. And what was the farthest distance? Because for example, in my younger life, my dream was to move to Hawaii. Can oh. Dan's moving arrange <laughs> a move to Oahu? Uh, most certainly, most certainly. Um, really? Yes, and, and anywhere else in the world. Um, it happened, I just did an estimate for a, uh, a woman who's moving to uh, Kodiak Island in Alaska. Um, oh. So... You know, anywhere in the world, we, we do, a, as I said, we do a lot for the, uh, the U.S. government, the, the military, um, and obviously they, their things go anywhere that we have a base. Um, so, and the most unusual thing, well, there's probably lots of those. You can't talk about the mafia <laughs> stories, no mafia <laughs> stories. Um, <laughs> did, definitely had a woman who was interested, could she ride in the truck from, from I think it was from here to Florida. Oh she God. wanted to actually go with her stuff in the truck, and huh? obviously that that's not happening. Um, as far as uh, people ask if we can move their pets all the time, and there are actually companies out there that will, you know, you can move their pets. So um, you don't? Oh. Move them. We don't. We don't move them. No, <laughs> no. But okay. uh, but you hook them up with somebody. Yes, else. exactly. Okay. How's that, uh, caller? Okay. Thank you so much, and. Uh, Remember anyone contemplating a move called Dan's Moving and Storage. Is that your mother? It is not my mother. It is my aunt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Thank you, Aunt Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful Easter. <laughs> Nothing like family testimonials. There That's you go. great. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, let that be a lesson to you, anybody that builds a piano. Don't build it in the house unless it comes apart. Or, or airplanes. Or airplanes or airplanes. boats or anything else. Yep. So, yep. oh, that's a great story. Um, so getting back to our, our seniors that would be kind of skittish about you coming into their house, they're going to be concerned about, you know, their 200-year-old crystal, chandeliers, china, you name it. There's going to be things. So what happens? There's got to be somewhere along the line there's a whoops. Of course. So how, I mean, how does that work? Well, I mean, we, you know, we are fully insured, of mm -hmm. course. Um, you know, when, when something happens, it, it goes through the same insurance process. Um, for, the, for the most part, if, if we pack your things up in boxes and stuff like that, it's totally insured. If you pack things in a box and we move it and something's broken in there, um, unless that box has somehow been damaged in some way, um, you know, you, you it's on you. It's on you. Right. So if Correct. you if you hand pack it and your company does it, then it's on you. If it, right. I do it, it's on me. This is like outstanding. This is another phone call. We never get these many phone calls. Oh. You got like you got like a it's caller, my, it's my, it's my a fan, magnetism or my something. My fan club. <laughs> Good morning, caller. Welcome to the senior report. Yes, I was wondering, is there ever a time when you tell someone that you, you can't move something, like you can't put that piano upstairs or you can't bring it down. <laughs> well, people. And, and what do you do if you you know someone's got their prized possession upstairs, but you can't bring it downstairs because it no longer fit? People people remodel. You know, unfortunately, that happens all the time. Um, you know, the biggest they seem to keep making beds bigger and bigger and bigger. A, a king size bed just won't fit up the uh, won't fit up the stairs. But uh, you know, you see some. There was a, a show I saw. I don't know if it's still on, but what the Santini brothers, it was about a, a moving company in, in New York City that had to take things, actually used a crane, um, you know, to lift things up to the 49th floor. Um, but no, that, uh, back to your question, that happens all the time. Um, the things, people have remodeled the house, that piano was down there for 
you know, when they moved in, they redid it. Now that piano's not coming out. Mm -hmm. So you have to, mm -hmm. at some point, you have to make a choice. What's, your, uh, what's more important, the railing or, or that piano or other piece of furniture? Caller, do you have something in mind that, that you're thinking about? I, I was just thinking that, that uh, my uncle's house has a really narrow stair set and, and it curves at a really sharp 90 degree angle and it's, it's mm -hmm. hard to get some stuff up and down that. Well, I was just wondering if, if that ever happened and, and how you would get around to even something like that where you couldn't physically get it down the stairs. It, what, what are you going to do? You know, movers, not magicians. That's, uh, that's a line that I've, <laughs> I've heard before. But, I mean, there's, there are other options. Things can come out windows. We've taken windows out of, uh, out of a second floor and hoisted it down. Um, you know, and you'd be surprised. Things can, you know, can get up stairs downstairs more than you think especially with uh with somebody who knows what they're doing um but there are there certainly are instances that uh that uh, you can't you just can't do it and then one one final question you you mentioned the caller before mentioned oahu how would you do that do you do you take it on a boat or do you send it over an airplane or, or how would you move to oahu if you're taking most of your stuff well it it depends i mean if if some people who are just moving like their personal effects um they go they can go in an airplane they go in what are called air cargo boxes um the the woman that i referenced going to uh alaska we had a lot of things are moved in wooden containers, um, and then if you, when you see a train going down the, the track some days, you'll see the, the steel containers that are being uh, carted by those trains. Um, things go in there, that, and then they, go on a, they do want to go on a boat. Um, there's, there's many different modes of transportation. Um, just depends on what you're, what you're moving. So one, one place that we do a lot of work for is, is Cummins. Um, they have they have plants in England um, and and also in Japan. Um, and so, and so there's all that kind of transfer. Uh, those things go in in the steel containers or the wooden containers, which those then go into the steel containers. Wow, wahoo! Okay, caller, hope so, that answers your question. Are you still there? Okay, they hung up. Ah, well. <laughs> Okay. That uh, happens to me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I'd like to, to follow up on that. My son's in the, in the Army, Special Forces, and they're moving him all the time. And uh, so would it be any different for the military to move for you? In other words, let's say my son uh, came back to the area and then he had to go to another country. Right now he's overseas and his home base is out of Germany and then I can't tell you where he is right now because if I did he'd kill me. Uh, but uh, you know it's one of those security Special things. forces. Special That's forces, right. Yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but how do, you, how do you move somebody now to an army base? Is that any different? No, not really. Um, they're, uh, you know, it's set up through the government. Um, they, I just was a, got a memo from uh, our, our van lines um, that on May 15th of this year there will be 5,000 military moves put into the system worldwide mm -hmm. um, which is a substantial amount of of moves especially coming into the summer mm -hmm. um, the, the moving industry is busiest in the summer um, people do move when their children are out of school I know that doesn't necessarily apply to seniors um, but that is we do about 70% of our business in about 50% of the year, which is mm -hmm. basically May to yeah, October-ish, okay. somewhere sure. in there. Sure. Um, so, you know, if moving accordingly for somebody, you know, moving, it, it's tough. Moving in the winter is a, is a oh, tough experience yeah. for, for everybody. everybody. Um, well, you know, the, it's slippery, the doors, <laughs> gotta keep the door open, so on and so forth. Just into the um, snow. Right, exactly. but. You know, we, it may, it, we cover the floors, things like that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we take every precaution that we can to, to make sure uh, things are, are taken care of. Okay, so let's go back to my question as far as the military. So let's say you pack them up, and you, I know they put them in shipping crates sometimes and all that sort of thing. Correct. So how far, how far does Dan's moving take those items? I mean, from point A to point where? Well, obviously, in a... Dan's moving, the farthest that I can go is the Continental 48 United States. You no, know. what I mean is do you go to... Oh, I mean, we, we, we ship you, things to Japan, you know. Do your truck, what I mean is do your trucks go to like a military 
Some most, place? most most military stuff, if it's being shipped overseas, mm -hmm. goes to Bayonne, New Jersey. There which, you go. That's what I'm, I'm looking yeah, for. Okay. That's where to that's New where Jersey. they go and get to a, you know, to a uh, a port. Okay. And so from there, then the military takes over. And, and you're well, that's it's still it's still done by a you know a. Uh, carrier um, mm -hmm. that's working for the government but it's but as far as my responsibility that's where it ends that's where it the ends there right there okay. correct because I know so many times uh, Scott will say I had a TV and it's all busted and I have no idea where it got busted so I mean in the paperwork sometimes is a nightmare it's just as just as well just to go buy a new one and be done with it but well you know there there's in, in most moves we do an inventory sure. you know the condition of things were when they mm -hmm. uh, when, when we took them into possession, and then when you get them back, if there's a chip in something, then you know that, that mm -hmm. that's, the movers did it. Right. Okay, how about uh, cars? Do you move cars? Most certainly, most certainly. How's that work? Um, there's different, uh, there's different uh, modes for that, again, too. Most of them, I mean, they sometimes can go into the... Uh, into the car, into the truck with okay. the, with the household goods. Really? Um, oh yeah, I didn't we know have, that. North American has a fleet of car hauling trucks. Also, that's all they move. Um, again, in the summertime, um, the capacity for the furniture into trucks is what they want to do. So they'll put the cars on car haulers on the back. Uh, you right, okay. right. Or you mean on, no, on, a, on, a, on a separate car carrier? Oh, oh like you, you see know. those double deckers right, and all that stuff. Right, oh, okay. right. Because there's so much tonnage, you know, mm -hmm. furniture that needs to be moved in the summer. They want to keep the trucks for that. <laughs> so. Okay, we just got a, a caller that doesn't want to talk, but they want to know about money, expenses. Um, I don't know how you even talk about this, but is there any rule of thumb or just give us an idea? Of, Let's let's take a simple. Give us a simple example and just work it from there. Well, local moving. Let's do that. Local okay. moving for seniors um, um, at this moment in time is one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. That's for three men in the truck. That's the time it takes to load and unload the truck. Um, that is a discounted price that is uh -huh. that is given. Well, that's good. To um, know. Yeah, as I said, we're the. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of moving at, at Fredonia Place and, and Tanglewood also. All right, all right. So let's let's take an example then. Let's say there's a, it's a small apartment, okay, and they don't have a lot of stuff. Let's just make this up as we go along. So let's say they're going to go from Jamestown to Fredonia Place, okay. So we know there's about an hour ride, so one hundred twenty five dollars, ding ding, Correct. and it's going to take however long it takes them to pack up that person's artifact. Are we are we are we packing it or are we just moving it? Are, did did you pack up your own dishes or are we going to do that? You're going to you're going to do it for them because they're they're seniors and they can't do it. Okay, well that's that's a little harder to right. guesstimate while we're just sitting here. Okay, some well, that's, some what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get people, across. It may not be that easy. That some people have a lot of stuff, <laughs> and some people, you know, aren't hoarders, okay. so, so okay. to speak. Okay, um, fair enough. You know, most. Uh, so, so, the, so the packing that is a little bit of a gray area to. All right. So, so, let's say, so let's but a, but a move the move itself. Mm -hmm. Let's just say going to. I know the the layouts of Fredonia Place. Mm -hmm. I know what it normally takes. Um, you're depending if they're going to the second floor, which of course takes a mm -hmm. little bit longer than sure. than the first floor. Um, with the hour travel time, you're you're looking at probably about a three hour labor mm -hmm. and then the hours so you're looking at about 500 bucks okay that's for that's for a jamestown to that that does not include the packing right as right. i said so that'd be extra all right, right. <laughs> this is like unprecedented this only happens like when we have kathy young here we have another phone call oh geez <laughs> good morning i have to come on more often yeah i have lots to talk about good morning good morning good morning guys good morning, ah, good morning linda this how are you linda Spalding. good how are you on this beautiful morning? Good. We're talking about moving. You want to move? Uh, no, not. This, this is a very <laughs> traumatic experience. We were just talking about that. Linda. <laughs> but it's it's necessary from time to time. Sure. <laughs> so what's what's going on in your world? Well, I just wanted to say how much I am enjoying that tape that was put together a number of years ago, uh, in in the year two thousand, featuring the history of Chautauqua and oh. the Chautauqua uh, Library Club, which is called the Chautauqua Literary and Scientific Circle, and uh, the, 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 all this information about Chautauqua's history and the interview with Dan Braddon. And I think Doug put a lot of that tape 
he did a lot of that taping mm -hmm. because I remember being there with him. It's very historical, and I have to say, I think it's the best I've seen <laughs> anywhere about Chautauqua because right. it really is a history piece. What time is that being as broadcast, or just uh, any time during the day? Uh, I've seen it go on at seven in the evening. And it goes on in the afternoon. I don't know if it's around one. And I've watched it a number of times. It is excellent. Okay, great. And, you know, the people that put it, there were a lot of people that worked on it, and I'm sure the Harveys did, did a lot of um, sure. the splicing and chalk and different people. It's 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 really very, very good, very informative. shows all the different presidents that have been here and very well. I, I, I've watched it about four times so far. <laughs> Lots of information in there, huh? Yes. Okay. Hey, Linda, with, at the Office of the Aging, do you have requests for, for moves? Like we're uh, talking about you here know, work? I don't get too many requests for moves. It does, because I don't work in that department. I work in the employment unit. Mm -hmm. However, I do know that moving is a very uh, important uh, experience for the seniors, and they do need help with it. And it's nice to know that there are... Uh, moving companies and entities that do assist seniors at a lower rate because I know it can be quite a expensive and complicated ordeal. So what about uh, un uh, not unemployment, employment? What's, what do you got to do? There are days? jobs. What there are got? a number of jobs off like the senior aid program that I am referring people to, mm -hmm. and there are jobs coming up with the senior aid program. Uh, they, the, the openings with the senior aid program right now have just really occurred because we had to hold back on our budget. We couldn't put new people on as senior aides. Uh, it was very sparing, very sparingly. But we do have openings now. So um, we need people in all locations, North, South County, and Mayville. What do they do? They can do just about anything. Oh. Uh, we place them at what we call host agencies. Mm -hmm. These are not-for-profit okay. or government entities. And they work, uh, they could call an assignment, it's a training to work thing, where while they're in this particular setting, they're to be looking for work off the program because these are temporary in job, uh, in, in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do anything from being a bus aide to a driver's mm -hmm. assistant to become a driver wow. to office aides, uh, home care, outreach, any, any occupation that you can think of that's in Chautauqua County at these places, they can do uh, as an assistant and then move on. Um, it's a wonderful experience because we all know that to get a job, it's easier if you already have one. If you're already in the job market working, right. you've already passed a barrier to get your job. Sure. Linda, what are the requirements for this program? Well, for this particular program, it is funded, so there are guidelines. Uh, there are federal guidelines. And for like a household of uh, one, it's around 14000 a year. However, there are incomes that we do not include in our calculations. For example, unemployment insurance is not calculated. We disregard 25% of the gross Social Security income. My dog wants to talk to I know, you. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's giving me an editorial in the background. <laughs> he says, don't listen to her. <laughs> but you know, people shouldn't even be concerned whether or not they meet the eligibility guidelines. They should call, and I will okay. do an assessment on the phone and work with them. Of course, they cannot be working, too. That's, that's um, the two important elements to being eligible is, number one, you can't be working at the time, and you must be at least 55 years of age or over. I get a job. And if, <laughs> and if they don't meet the, meet the eligibility guidelines, we refer them on to other jobs that we have, and we always refer people to our one stop, which is called Chautauqua Works. Mm -hmm. There's one in Jamestown on the corner of Third and Pine, and there is another one in, Dun in Dunkirk on Central Avenue. So we, uh, we work very closely with the one stop because they have combined their services with people from different agencies and with the Department of Labor. So it's, it's a very nice setting. Awesome. Well, thanks, Linda, for calling in. Did I, did I see there was a wedding in your family recently? Yes, my grandson got married. I put the link on my I Facebook I saw that. Page. What a <laughs> handsome couple. Yes. Oh, I, 
he is. They are a handsome couple, and he's a beautiful boy. He's a very good grandson. We'll have to get him on the show. He'll have to sing, sing for us or something. Is he still singing? Oh, yes. They're traveling. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're traveling all over the Backstreet Boys. Imagine yeah. that. Oh. And he's going to be coming to Darien Lake in the oh, summer, yeah. okay. and I hope he's able to stop here. You know, he's written a book. Oh, yeah? And it's in the Mayville and Chautauqua Libraries. Very cool. It's called Facing the Music and Living to Talk About It. <laughs> yeah, musicians have that. <laughs> well, it's about other things, too. It's a very good book. Okay. Well, Linda, thanks for calling in, and we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the beautiful uh, weather. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, and I'm so glad uh, to see your guest on the show. I hope you have a wonderful Easter weekend, and I certainly will pass this information along to seniors awesome. about the moving. Okay, and if you want a job, call Linda. There you go. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All have right. a great week. Thanks, Linda. So I can turn the tables on you a little bit. Sure, go right ahead. I'll ask you some trivia. All right, trivia. Just a couple. All right, cool. Moving, moving trivia. Moving, tri <laughs> moving trivia. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. What would you think okay. are, I mean, I had the top ten. Top ten. But what would you think the states that are losing people the fastest are? Losing the fastest. <laughs> oh, Randy's saying New York. Ellington. <laughs> <laughs> New York. Is one he's he's raising his hand. I would say that, and maybe like uh, I'm thinking of Rhode Island or someplace like that. Well, New York and New Jersey lead the, lead the list. <laughs> lead right. the list. Rhode Island didn't seem to make it. Probably there's not that many people there to begin with. <laughs> but most of the most of the places are the Moving on out. are the northern uh, okay northern states. Okay, another one. Um, so okay, so uh, by the on the contrast of that, mm. what would be the ten most inbound states? Well, okay, I'll go. Florida, California. How's that? We think, Randy. I've heard the South, so Carolinas. Carolinas. Okay. Yeah. That. Well, Oregon, Oregon, and Idaho. Actually, this is for this is for 2013. Okay. Oregon and Idaho led the list. Um, Texas, and then Vermont. I must. Uh, we all lost, including you, Jeff. He was in my earpiece. He's he's voting uh, in my ear. And then <laughs> North Carolina, South Carolina, okay. Florida are, okay. are what five. Six, what you said the seven. first one was Oregon. Yeah, I mean, sixty percent of uh, of uh, go west, go yeah. north. You know all the time out there. Okay, yeah, so. you got it. Okay, so, one know. more question, and then we're going to wrap up. Oh, for me. Okay. Yeah, last um, one. I'm how many? How many? Uh, how many Americans moved? I mean, uh, in. 2000, well, this is 12, 12 and 13. How many Americans moved? Within million. One within one million. <laughs> uh, four million. Seven. 36 million people. Oh, that's like 10% of the country. Okay, well, folks, you've been listening to the Senior Report. I'm Doc Hamels. Reads under the weather, and we're wishing him good uh, health and good weather over this Easter uh, weekend. Hopefully you'll have him back next week. We're sitting here with Mark Lutz, who has been talking to us about senior moving and all kinds of cool trivia. Mark, you got about 30 seconds to t say whatever you like to say, and then we're going to get out of here. Well, again, the, the most important thing is, uh, is communication. When you, uh, when you come in, when I come in, or someone comes in to, uh, to uh, assess your move situation, um, tell them what you want, tell them what you need. Um, you're, you're better off to find out that it's going to cost you too much and then go from there. Um, again, communication, as in most things, is the key to everything. Awesome. So. Thanks for coming on to the show. Folks, I want to thank a number of people that made the show possible today. Let's start with Chuck Kelsey, our, our guru of all gurus when it comes to the studio here. Reed Powers for putting this show together. Our cameraman today is Randy Burt. Uh, Chris Burt is in the back room doing all kinds of computer stuff and our very fine Jeff Zook who uh, flips the cameras on and off for us and makes us all look really good and all the other folks as you can see on here that I always forget thanks for coming in stopping in with us for a little while happy Easter and have a wonderful spring weekend I'm Doc Hamels see you next time there you go